Vice Mayor, I'll turn the floor over to you for the city report. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me this morning. Uh, we actually have a lot going on in the city right now, so I do apologize for my reading, and I'm happy to see that the city manager is here as well as Paul Stanick, so they can certainly jump in and correct me and steer me in the right direction if I get off track. Uh, but first and foremost, our water treatment plant, as you guys have hopefully already heard, that uh, there was a fire there and there was some damage done. And I just want to at least give you all an update on that. And that the administration building, the cleaning is complete. We have temporary power installed. Uh, the building has been cleared to occupy staff. And that's actually an important part that they're actually able to get back in the building and get back to some sort of normalcy. Uh, the stock room and the pump room, cleaning and assessment of salvageable material and equipment is underway. Uh, the uh, the main process room, the primary goal is to resume normal operations. Insurance and engineering are still investigating and project planning to address permanent repairs, cleaning, and demolition is to be scheduled. The city continues to request residents to conserve water and reclaim the water, limiting water of lawns and other high water usage activities. Encourage taking shorter showers, running dishwashers, and laundry when it's full, et cetera. So please be mindful of every time you're using the water and see how you might be able to conserve a little bit. Uh, the budget, the city passed its budget on September 23rd, and it is just over $207 million. Uh, and for the seventh year in a row, the city of Dunedin's millage rate uh, is maintained at $4.13 per $100,000 or $1,000 or of assessed value. So yay for us. <laughs> uh, we have ARPA, you guys have uh, uh, numerical recovery plan. Uh, Y'all have probably heard all kinds of things about that. The, Dun the city of Dunedin was actually awarded uh, $18.3 million, I believe. And that is over a two year period. We have already received uh, 9.1 million this year and we'll receive the remainder next year. And so we are actually asking residents uh, for their input on what they think the money should be spent on. And so there are some events on Tuesday, November 9th, from 9 to 11 at City Hall. And that's for Dunedin businesses to get their input. Uh, Tuesday, November 9th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the library for residents and public input. And then Wednesday, November 17th, from 2 to 4 at the library for nonprofit. So if you guys can... Mark your calendars from that for your respective positions in the community. Please show up. Please give us your input. Uh, special events, very exciting. We're starting to come back and see some normalcy. Uh, we've got the Celtic Festival coming up, uh, the Holland Games in the spring. We've got Wines the Blues and all of our holiday events are all on schedule, all on schedule so far. Uh, and so you can look to our Parks and Rec event calendar for, for those event details. City Hall Project is on schedule and hopefully we'll have a completion in September of 2022. We did have two overnight concrete pours that were successful and we do apologize for the residents because that was a pretty early morning for them starting around 3 a.m. for each of those pours. Uh, thank you. Thank them for their patience. Um, John Lawrence Park, Pioneer Park uh, has been under renovation. Uh, hopefully we'll have a ribbon cutting on the new rehab uh, park and November 9th at 9 a.m. Uh, public art in the park will be installed over the winter as further enhancement with further enhancements to the park. Uh, the city is looking for opportunities to enhance our sister city program. It's exciting to get this back up and running. COVID kind of put a damper on that. Uh, but for this Holland Games, we are going to have uh, a visitor from, from Sterling, Scotland, as well as uh, with the director of Ster Sterling Smith Art Museum traveling to Dunedin to participate in the Dunedin Holly Games, bringing on loan a piece of art from the Smith Museum collection and provide an art talk at the Dunedin Fine Arts Center. So, George, and thank you very much uh, for your work in that. Honeymoon Island, they're looking for environmental restoration, so they want your input. So uh, please go to the um, Honeymoon Island website and look to see how you guys can get involved. Uh, a Dunedin City parking map is now available online as an interactive tool to help residents and guests 
find parking downtown. Simply Google downtown Dunedin public parking to find the link and view all of your public parking options. Other major projects, the uh, uh, Highland Aquatic Center master planning and architectural uh, planning is, is underway. We're looking to see what we can do with our, uh, with our aquatic complex. We're repurposing the former Toronto Blue Jays player development complex into a, a parks maintenance facility. And if any of you all know where our current Jones building is off of St. Christopher, it's actually moving all the contents and the employees in that building over to uh, Salon. And there's an old uh, Toronto Blue Jays building that they're no longer using that we get we get to use, buy and have. Yay. Yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> land, land use market analysis for the Coca-Cola property. That is ongoing. Annexation of the Gladys Douglas property to the city and sustainability planning for the Dunedin Golf Club. So that is a lot that's going on. It sounds like we're pretty busy. But that's all that I have this morning. So thank you guys for allowing me the opportunity to give a state of the city report. Back to you. Oh, thank you very much mm -hmm. for the report. Good news to hear we're getting back into the water plant again. Thanks for moving forward. I know it's been a big question mark for a number of people. Stephanie, at this point, I'll turn the floor over to you to introduce our program speaker. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. This morning, we're going to welcome Alan McHale from the Scottish American Society. He is originally from Edinburgh, Scotland. He has been in Florida since 2001. He joined the board of the Scottish American Society in 2017 and has been president of the society since 2020. He currently works for the sheriff's office and has a background in marketing and sales management. Welcome, Alan. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to try and share my screen with you and uh, let's see if we can. Um, can anyone see what I've got up on the screen? Not yet, sir. No. No, hold on. Let's see. I think the host has disabled participant screen sharing. I just enabled it for you, so you should be good to go. <clears throat> Can you see it now? Negative. Negative. Okay, let's try again. Um, that one. Nothing yet? No. Technology. I love it. it for yeah. <laughs> right on target. Share. Sure, let's try that. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Success. Here we go. Good morning. Um, good morning, Mayor. Uh, sorry, Vice Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager, and all you other dignitaries that have turned up this morning. Uh, it's great to see everyone at this uh, beautiful morning in October. So, Thank you uh, for the opportunity, Larry, to speak to everyone this morning. Uh, it's a privilege uh, to be here. Um, let's see if we can get this thing going. So who are the Scottish American Society? Um, well, we're a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization located in downtown Dunedin. Um, the building that we occupy used to be known as the Old Red Brick Schoolhouse. And... Um, we moved it to its current location from where it used to be. It's just as well that we moved it because the new city hall is going on the site that we were used to locate many, many years ago. Um, we are fortunate enough for the building to have been designated Dunedin's first historic landmark in late 2019, but we renamed it the Scottish Cultural Centre um, in 2020 to reflect what we do in the hall um, and in the, the rooms that are in, within the hall. Um, the hall itself, there's been recent, uh, we've recently uncovered some documents that would indicate that in spite of the, the plaque that we got from the city saying around 1940, uh, that the building's 100 years old. And that with that, it takes a lot of work and a lot of maintenance to keep it going. Um, so last year we, uh, ripped out the kitchen and upgraded it with stainless steel equipment and cleaned it up. Um, for our members and guests, we now have an alcohol license, which is incredibly, the uh, Scottish American Society had never done that before. Um, we've turned our McGregor room, which is one of the rooms adjacent to the main hall, into a bar. 
And then last year, um, we uh, decided that we had an old storage room that uh, really needed to be cleaned up. And we've turned that now into a Scottish library and uh, named it after Sandy Keith, who was instrumental in maintaining the even Scottish heritage for over 30 years in the city. So we're quite happy to have named the, the, uh, the library after him. And then thanks to the city, uh, the city of Dunedin, who have supported us really well over the last couple of years, in spite of the pandemic, and we've, uh, we're really grateful to them. We're, in the next few days, we're actually going to be re replacing the flooring in the main hall. So that will brighten up the hall quite a lot. And uh, that's significant for us because, as I said, with a 100-year-old building, there's always something to do. Um, <clears throat> the building itself, within it, um, we, we always try to keep it Scottish. There are a lot of Scottish memorabilia around the hall. Um, then that includes over 70 clan and tartan crests that are up on, on the walls. And included in that are the Blue Jays in the city of Dunedin, as you can see here, as well as family crests. And we do have crests for each of the armed services in the United States. Um, they all have their own tartan, which is really interesting, um, as well as their crests. So we're happy to display that as well around the building. Um, so where did we come from? Um, the history of, the, of Scotland and in the United States goes back to the 1700s, where um, around about that time, a lot of uh, Scots left the country and uh, came to the United States. Today, we understand that from recent statistics that were published, there are over 300,000 expat Scots in Florida. Pinellas County itself has over 22,000. That's about 2.3% of the population. So we're well represented within uh, Pinellas County and the Scots are obviously well represented in the city of Dunedin. Dunedin itself was settled in the 1870s and named after the Gaelic word for Edinburgh, uh, that's Scotland's capital, which was Dun Eden and it's spelt in that way that you can see on the slide. But the Scottish American Society itself started in 1980, we're just over 40 years old. Uh, people got fed up meeting in, in, in their kitchens and the houses were beginning to get uh, busy when they all got together for a party on a Friday night. So they needed a place to gather and uh, they managed to get their hands on the hall that we have today. So what, is, what do we do? Um, our mission is to preserve and promote Scottish arts and culture in Dunedin. And uh, we do a lot of that with uh, bagpipes and drumming, as you can imagine. Uh, we have both Highland and Scottish country dance within our building. Um, Scottish culture is also known for storytelling, and we do that through music, poetry, and drama. And um, obviously, we know Scotland is known for tartan, whiskey, and, and shortbread, and we'll come back to that. And uh, history and hospitality are, are key elements of Scottish culture, which we try to embody in the Scottish American society. The society itself has actually changed over the last few years. Um, those people who started the society back in 1980 um, created it more as a social club. Um, most of them have, have passed on, unfortunately, through the years. And over the last couple of years, our membership tends to be a younger audience now that are more interested in, in seeing concerts and, and events and supporting individual uh, events rather than being part of a, a social organization. So the actual culture within our building has changed over the last couple of years and we're very fortunate to be supported in the way that we are. Um, it's, uh, it's been a difficult job, but it's been very rewarding and very successful for us. Um, today, uh, the building is now the home of the Isle of Skye Highland Dancers, led by director Lindsay Mallon. And these girls um, and some of the younger students perform at most of the events that we have within the hall. Uh, we're also home to the Progressive Arts Theatre Group um, that's led by Kirsten Stiff Walker. Uh, she has classes every week they, and they put on quarterly musical theatre productions. This weekend, they have a murder mystery uh, show that's going on. That's tonight, uh, Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. And they've produced shows like Shrek, um, Annie, um, they did uh, uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol last year, 
and they're a fantastic group of, of young students and uh, uh, budding artists and actors and actresses for the future. We also have weekly music classes uh, for bagpipes and traditional Celtic music. Uh, we have a new class that started uh, a few weeks ago on a Saturday morning. It's become very popular where, where those that are interested in honing their skills on bagpipes and other instruments can actually do it in a relaxed environment. Um, we have our members and guests pub nights on, uh, every month, uh, which are literally their mini Kayleys. And a Kaylee is a Scottish party. And it's, uh, we started them a, a few months ago and they've become quite successful. We have people singing, there's some music, there's food and there's dance. The hall itself is getting really busy now. We have classes five days a week. And when we add, add the rentals where other people hold their meetings, it's become a very busy building. And we've really turned the, the building back into a community uh, uh, facility where more and more organizations are coming and using it as part of the community. So we're very proud of that. And one of the latest things that we we started, we started this a few months ago, is the genealogy work group. Um, it's not a class as such, but um, people turn up, uh, drop in and join us on a Sunday night, and we give them help and advice on discovering or researching their heritage. Um, we help with building family trees, and it's become really popular. There's so many tools out there, uh, like um, DNA, uh, the... Uh, the one, two, three, me, uh, the ancestry.com, there's the, uh, the Mormon site. Uh, there's so many sites and you want to check your heritage, you can get lost in it very, very quickly. Um, so we, we have uh, a girl that's been doing this for about 20 years now, her name's Paula and she has a fantastic knowledge of how to work with all those tools and how to get the best out of it and also how to do it cheaply because it can become very expensive. Uh, you just have to be careful um, from my perspective on what you find out because, um, yes, um, I can hear my wife laughing in the background because I did the DNA thing as part of this class a few months ago and discovered in spite of the accent you hear and the fact that I was born and raised and brought up in Edinburgh, Scotland, that I'm 71% Irish. So if anyone out there wants to buy a kilt, just let me know and uh, I'm sure I can get you fitted for it. Um, the rest of me, uh, actually, luckily for me, um, the, uh, the DNA, the Ancestry.com changed their algorithm because at one point he said I was 4% English which as to a, a really loyal Scot was quite a shock. Um, as I said, fortunately, they, they issued new numbers recently where the English element was taken away and I'm now 29% uh, Scottish and 71% Irish. So uh, be careful what you look for, but this class is becoming very popular and uh, it's a great way of finding out where you came from. And in some cases, you can, you, you can even find relatives you may not know you had. So... Uh, it can be very good, good fun. Um, as would befit our organization, we have regular whiskey tastings in the hall. Uh, the United States market for Scotch whiskey in 2019, which is the last numbers published, were $1.4 billion. Now, in spite of what everyone thinks, not all of that was in Dunedin. Um, but we do these whiskey tastings every couple of months. There are 134 distilleries in Scotland, so there's a lot to explore and a lot for us to go through. Uh, so at each whiskey tasting, we do three or four whiskies. Um, we also include food pairings uh, so that we add an, an element of uh, education to it. And for each of our uh, uh, whiskey tastings, we also have music and dance performances by the Isle of Sky dancers. And the key to most of our whiskey tastings is to have fun and enjoy each other's company, uh, make a big deal of the fact that really it doesn't matter what the whiskey is. It's all about the company you keep and the company that you bring to the hall. So uh, in spite of the fact that we, we do taste three or four whiskeys, and uh, we try to emphasize the element of, of enjoying each other's company and um, comradeship and uh, fellowship. So um, we'd love to see you there if that's something you're interested in. And I always say that 
for those of you who say you don't like Scotch whisky, um, I never believe that because I think the, the, the actual fact of it is that you just haven't found the one you like yet. So come along and we might be able to help you discover that. So what else do we do in, in our organization? Well, as befits a, a Scottish organization, we celebrate most of the holidays of, of Scotland. Uh, we celebrate Robert Burns, our national poet, in January. And just this year, we, we added some elements around Tartan Week. Tartan Week is around the 6th of April. The 6th of April is when the United States designated uh, Tartan Day, where we celebrate the declaration of our growth. Now, what does that mean to most people? Well, in the United States, the United States um, Constitution was based on the Declaration of Our Growth, which uh, separated church and state and gave the power to the people to decide their own fate. Um, so that was back, done many, many centuries ago, um, but was recognized in the late uh, 1980s by the United States government. And just this last year, um, the United States government first did this, and I think 19, in the late 1980s or 90s. And the declaration itself was, uh, there are six copies of that proclamation that are signed by uh, President Bush. And we actually had one of them in the hall this year. It was owned by uh, one of our members who sadly passed away this week, Bob Cameron. So God bless him. Um, but we, that was a, a nice element to be able to produce that. Um, oh, coming up in November is St Andrew's Night. St Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland, and we'll be having a showcase and a concert from a Scottish artist called Bill Mullen to celebrate that. And then at the end of the year, Hogmanay is a, a very special night for Scots. It's New Year's Eve to most people, and we'll be having a concert and party and dinner uh, to bring in the, the new year again. We're bringing that event back. It was, uh, as uh, Vice Mayor Gow said, we, the, the events are starting to happen again. And Hogmanay was, was something we did a, a few years ago, um, just before the pandemic. It was very popular. It was a great night. And uh, we do it in a traditional Scottish way. And we have some fun elements to it where we ring out the old year and bring in the new one. And uh, we'd like to see people there. So these are things that we do at the hall as well, which uh, there's always something going on. Um, <clears throat> the, the one big thing that keeps us going, and uh, we've managed to keep this, this uh, element going um, all through the pandemic. We've, we've been very fortunate. We had to scale back the, the audience size, um, but our Haggis Celtic music concerts were now starting or have just started our fourth season. Uh, we started it back in, in September with uh, Off Kilter, the Byrne Brothers and the Highland Dancers again. And this uh, particular event was so popular, we had to move it to another venue. Um, Off Kilter are one of the most popular bands in the Celtic music industry. And uh, they come from Orlando. And because of their popularity, we had to move the event to the Conway Centre. So that was a fantastic night and a fantastic start to our season. Um, there's Jamie Holton. Jamie actually learned to play bagpipes with Sandy Keith um, back in the day. And uh, this is a picture of, um, of Jamie and Scotty on the drums behind them. But uh, fantastic night to get our season off to a great start. Um, the Scottish American Society also gives back to the community. And I think it's something that we weren't really known for over the years uh, before. Um, we've introduced a lot of that. All of the classes that we have in our hall are subsidized. Uh, we charge a very minimal rental rate to the, to the classes to in order the uh, students who are less fortunate to be able to participate. We also offer student scholarships, um, both individually and in classes. And we donate money to the other Scottish arts programs within the schools system in Dunedin. Um, we also see ourselves very much as part of the community. So uh, during the early parts of the pandemic, when the restaurants were closed, we helped to raise money for the first responders, for them to be fed by uh, the restaurants of Dunedin. Um, we do have bins in our hall uh, at every event, and we collect food for Dunedin Cares. And we raised over maybe six or 700 pounds of uh, food for them last year. And then earlier this year, um, due to the unfortunate or the untimely death of Deputy Michael Magley, we did raise 
over $500 at one of our events for him and his family or for his family. And uh, he was the, the first um, serving deputy to have been killed in action as part of Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. So he left a wife and two young girls and we were happy to be able to raise some money to help his family for the future. Um, so what have we got coming up? Um, we've got quite a busy, um, this is our busiest season, um, the fall and the winter. So we have four, uh, three more concerts that are scheduled for this year. We've got Derek Warfield and the Young Wolf Tones in October. We've got a, a fantastic singer songwriter who lives in Missouri, but hails from Dublin and Ireland called Enda Riley. Um, and then uh, just by popular demand, uh, this, is, this is about the third or fourth time we've had this band called the Burn Brothers, um, and they're going to be doing a Celtic Christmas concert this year. Uh, the Burn Brothers are interesting because they were performing on the streets of Dublin and were discovered by a gentleman who was looking for entertainers and looking for the design and the, um, the paraphernalia that went into uh, downtown Disney's uh, Raglan Road, which is their Irish bar. And they brought the Byrne Brothers over to help open that facility when they first opened it. Uh, the, the Byrne Brothers turned out to be so popular that uh, Disney offered them help to get a visa, and they now all have their green cards. It's three young brothers who are fantastic entertainers and their dad, Tommy. And uh, if you haven't seen them, I would encourage you all to come and see the Byrne Brothers great entertainment and a very much a family show. Um, our Scottish cultural events we've already talked about with the whiskey tasting and St Andrew's Day concert and showcase in November, Hogmanay dinner in December and then the Robert Burns supper in January. And then we have our pub nights for members and guests the last Saturday of every month. So very, very busy season coming up for us. What about the future? Well, <clears throat> Uh, anyone who knows me, I'm always passionate about creating plans uh, for the future because um, you can't rest on your laurels. The last couple of years have been extremely hard work for us, but we have to keep going and we have to look to uh, reaching out to the community and being a bigger part of the Eden scene, if you like. Um, so we've got new classes coming up in Gaelic. Uh, we've been asked to do workshops on Robert Burns poetry. So those that are interested can get a deeper understanding of of the words, uh, poetry, the Robert Burns poetry can be quite difficult for some, um, but um, it's uh, very interesting, the background to each uh, element of his, his work. And then in Scottish history, um, from my perspective, we won't, you know, Sc Scottish history is, is really interesting and almost every page of any book that you turn on Scottish history is we never got on with each other. We were always fighting and it's, um, it's quite interesting to, to, to read about it. Uh, we won't get into all the weeds of it because once you start a, a, a subject on Scottish history, it can really drag you in and, uh, and become um, really uh, intensive. But we want to cover all the basics, the Robert the Bruce, where did the Scots come from, uh, Mary Queen of Scots, um, and maybe even take it up to today so people can understand how the politics of Scotland work and how it fits into the United Kingdom and the rest of Europe today. So that's something we're going to be looking at very soon. Today, we're also part of the, you know, fortunately, we're part of the Dunedin Council of Organizations who are always been, have been uh, announcing our events over the last few years. We're grateful to them. We're also a member of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, we will be uh, participating in more community events, as I said, to become a bigger part of things we do. We've uh, started partnering with Dunedin Middle School Music Program and with the Dunedin High School Music and Drama Programs to help them uh, recover from the pandemic because uh, like ourselves, uh, they've all been affected quite badly over the last couple of years and need all the help they can get uh, to get the programs back up to where they went. And then as uh, Vice Mayor um, Gow mentioned, the, the, the city of Dunedin have um, if you like, they've, they've rekindled the interest in a sister city relationship with Stirling, Scotland. So we've already had some dialogue with organisations over there uh, as a Scottish American society, and we'll be doing some further engagement with that in the coming months and years. Um, so 
this is the big ask. Um, basically, how can you help? Um, it's not we. You can't go through anything like this without telling you, uh, you know, what we need and how how we how you can help us. Well, the biggest thing is to attend one of our events. Everyone is welcome. One of the misconceptions about the Scottish American Society is that it's a closed shop to Scots and expatriate Scots. That's not the case today. Everyone is welcome, and we'd love to see them. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Haggis concerts themselves. Um, the the music that we bring to the to the uh, to the hall is the best in traditional and modern Celtic music. Um, we tend not to focus on the bands in the local Irish bars like Flanagan's and other ones in Tampa. We tend to bring uh, bands or artists that are traveling the country. They come into Florida to appear at the bigger festival events. And while they're here, uh, we invite them to come to the hall. So we tend to focus on some of those bigger acts. And if you look at the, the, the number of uh, artists that we've had, over the last couple of years and put them all together, we probably would be one of the best um, lineups of any festival that's held in the, the state of Florida. Uh, you can become a member. We have membership for individuals, for couples, uh, or for business affiliates. Um, we, we welcome that. Or you can make a donation or sponsor one of our events. All these things are tax deductible. Or you can rent the hall for one of our events. The hall itself, um, as I said, is 100 years old. It takes a lot of maintenance. Um, just this year, or just recently, we had to have it tented, like some organizations in, in the city. Um, that took $3,000 out of our, our meager funds uh, very quickly. And then the same month, we had a plumbing issue on the outside, which uh, the city of Dunedin graciously uh, helped us uh, work out what was wrong and helped us to fix it. Um, last year, we had to rebuild the whole kitchen within the, the hall because of uh, leaks and uh, electrical problems we had there, which started uh, something that cost us over $6,000. So um, every year, because of the age of the building, it's really hard to keep it going. But we're a very positive group. We're hardworking. Um, and we've always got something going on uh, at the Scottish American Society the Scottish American Society today is not the organization it was many years ago. It's open to the public. It's open to the citizens of Dunedin. And we'd love to see you and any of your friends to come along to us. You can find out everything that's going on on Facebook, on our website, uh, at www.sas-dunedin.org. And I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has anything. I think the chat line's open. So... I'll have a little look at it, but thank you once again to the Council of Organizations for the opportunity to tell you about our little group in downtown Dunedin. The building is opposite Caledonian Brewery, just behind the parking lot that was opened by the city a few months ago, and uh, we'd love to see you there. Thank you. Thanks. I'm trying Does anyone have any questions? Let's see here. So we need to get you out. If we get him back, let's see here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, just took me a second to go there. Does anyone have any questions? You raise your hand. Well, I just want to give a shout out. Um, the history of the Episcopal Church is deeply indebted to Scotland uh, following the Revolutionary War. Uh, as the Episcopal Church was established here in the United States, uh, we needed uh, bishops um, to oversee the development of the church. And the Church of England would not ordain, consecrate any bishops for this fledgling offshoot in the United States, uh, a bit bitter over the outcome of the Re Revolutionary War. So instead, we turned to the bishops of the Church of Scotland, and they were more than happy uh, to accommodate uh, their new American uh, counterparts and ordain the first three bishops for the Episcopal Church. So... Uh, grateful to the Scotland and uh, certainly to its descendants and for our uh, beginnings. So a little bit of history. Thank you. Thank you. Something I wasn't aware of, but um, I'll look into that a little bit more. So thank you for that. Sure. Are there any other questions? Nothing else. Once, once again, thank you very much, Larry, for inviting me to participate and 
if anyone wants to reach out to me with questions later, I'd be quite happy to help in any way that I can. Uh, thank you very much. I enjoyed your program. Thank you. Thank you, Larry.